David Bonson joining us here in Studio 2, the Chief Investment Officer over at the Bonson Group. All right, David, I mean, that really is the question here. I mean, this has been a phenomenal rally by any sort of historical standard, and I think a lot of people look at it, and they wonder how much gas is really left in the tank. What is a catalyst, if you see any at all, that keeps this going? For the overall market, mm-hmm. I think the best possibility of catalyst is overvalued stuff getting more overvalued, <laughs> and I think that's problematic as a catalyst. Yeah. Um, there is uh, news that is already known, okay, rate mm-hmm. Cuts are coming. Mm-hmm. Uh, perhaps certain election results excite parts of the market. There's all kinds of things that are already on the table. Is it not priced in? Is double-digit earnings growth next year not priced in? Mm-hmm. Because, as a matter of fact, 13% earnings growth at a 22 times multiple is already priced in. Both of those things strike me as problematic. We may not get 13%. Mm-hmm. 22 times can't hold. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of issues there when you're talking about top-heavy, tech-dependent. Right. Well, let's talk about the top heaviness of that, because that is the risk, right? That if something does go wrong, then everything is going to go wrong with it. Despite all the talk about the broadening of this rally, this is still a market still highly concentrated in tech. So if you take the infotech sector and the S&P 500, that's like 30% of the S&P right now. You throw in the other tech sectors, I forgot what else, communication. Communication services. Is another 10. You're, you're getting close to 50%. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I think it's very different than what happened in 2000, yeah. but I don't know that I agree that everything has to drop if the big tech stuff drops. Mm. Cap-weighted indices will be because of math. But this is a big difference from 2000. When the NASDAQ dropped that way, the Dow was up that year. Mm -hmm. Um, Large cap value was up double digits. I saw it myself uh, within our dividend growth portfolio. We weren't down when all these things were getting hammered about a month ago. Um, I do think some of the defensive sectors of the market are very likely to go the other way, zig when the market zags. Mm -hmm. And so you really are kind of seeing right now uh, a very... um, shall we say, up and down market that is range bound, but it doesn't feel that way. People think they're doing real well. The Nasdaq's up about 3% per year for the last three years. So I guess it's a twofold question based on that. One is sort of what is the sensitivity to the broader index to say the data now after sort of what we got um, in the jobs number earlier in August and then how you take advantage of that? Well, that's a great question because I think that that was what the yen carry trade convoluted in our discussion in early mm-hmm. August was how much of it was about economic fundamentals versus a sort of technical and uh, levered unwind that had to take place. Uh, if the economic fundamentals were to go negative, you have to think it brings multiples down and earnings down. You can't have economic slowdown without it coming into corporate profits. Right now, we're assuming very good corporate profits and a good valuation mm-hmm. on that, which presupposes ongoing, healthy economic activity. Now, what you've seen since then is the market saying, okay, maybe we weren't uh, as uh, concerned as we thought we were, that the jobs numbers won't be so bad and so forth. It's not clear to anybody. And, but I don't think it's been clear for over a year. The jobs numbers have mostly been good. Manufacturing hasn't. Industrial production hasn't. To me, it's a very ambiguous environment for economic data. So then if we just go to the, the technical part of it, right? Um, City had a note out today that talked about how the dollar is now the funding currency and the carry trades alive and well just in a different kind of currency which leads me to believe there's just so much more technical nonsense out there still. Well that's true but when they talk about that way there's no way they could believe that people are going to borrow heavily when you actually have a normalized you know a 4% borrowing cost is not going to get you a lot of embedded leverage which is good. I don't want that kind of excess. That's just distortive the other way but you know it's funny I said this to clients yesterday uh, the dollar got hit when the market was down big at the beginning of August. The dollar got hit again in the market it has come way up. So one of the most tired things I've ever heard is people blaming a strong dollar on, on tough market or a weak dollar on tough market. Mm-hmm. It's always one or the other. But of course, it can't be both uh, other than a particular economic reason. I'm not clear what that reason is. The dollar matters for emerging market investors. It matters for commodity investors. But for a U.S. diversified investor, there's just certain companies that benefit from a slightly stronger dollar and certain that benefit from a slightly weaker. It's when you get a dramatic move one way or the other that speaks to an economic inefficiency. Do you see any potential for a dramatic move? I mean, a lot of people look at this this w- recent weakness in the dollar and they point to the shift in expectations on rates. So I'm wondering if those expectations shift even further or more dramatically, if you will, what does that mean for the It would dollar? require a surprise. Yes. And I don't think that you're going to get a surprise. And we're so, not going to definitely not get one on Friday. From no, now. certainly yeah. not. The Fed has not been in the business of surprising markets much about rates. Now they Not three, intentionally. No, but 375 yeah. basis point yeah. increases in a row a year and a 
and a half ago. That surprised markets. Mm. But um, no, I think they're going to telegraph every rate cut they do. And I mm. think they will more or less now be following the futures market. All right, David. Great stuff. David Bonson kicking us off to the close. Chief Investment Officer over at the Bonson Group. 